Going out for a simple day when minutes turn to hours and hours turn to days. How will you survive? Okay guys, though you can barely see it, today we are going to be talking about the PSK Generation 2. Completely new and completely un unknown by you guys. Now let's take a look at it. So to start off with what's most interesting to all of you, the pack. This is the Eberly Stock Multi-Pack Pouch. Now it's not a phenomenal name but it is a phenomenal pouch. So the reason why I picked this pouch is a couple reasons. The first is that I fell in love with the Janus um, by Maxpedition. It, the way it sat on my back, the way I could make it sit on the small of my back, the way it was unobtrusive, and the fact that it was longer than it was wide, or taller made it a selling point to me. And that is also exampled in the Eberly stock. Now, the second reason I chose this was the sheer amount of capacity. This pack here can hold roughly 189 cubic inches of storage. So that means that regardless to where you're packing out, you can have equipment that will fit your needs. With my previous Janus by Maxpedition, I didn't have everything I needed, whether I was going from the woodlands to the water or from the water to the woodlands. I could have a pack load out that would either allow one or the other, but not both. This pack easily doubles the storage capacity and allows me to have that extra ability to go where I need to go and to have the proper equipment. So the third reason I chose this was the ease of access to the primary tool. Now for me, I wanted to build a kit around a tool and I needed a kit that would have ease of access to that tool. Now for me, I chose the Leatherman Super Tool 300. Now the reason I did this is because I like a multi-tool. This can do carving, it can do skinning, it can do notching, it can do a whole wide variety of tasks, and it's a very nice tool overall. It's also pretty big, so it needs a good sized pouch for it to sit in. And that is what the Eberly stock has very easily on the side. So those are my three top reasons why I chose the Eberly Stock multi-pack pouch. Okay, so now let's actually take a look at what is in this Eberly Stock. So starting off, we already know that the multi-tool is over here, but what you don't know is the rest of it. So in this other side pouch, we have the medical supplies, or what I kind of deem the medical side of things. So in this little Altoids tin that also slips in here very easily, I have band-aids, I have, I have band-aids, I have uh, ointment, I have alcohol prep pads, a little bit of cordage, I have some uh, safety pins, and some different other medical supplies, including larger bandages other than just a small standard band-aid. So what we have in this pouch here is one, an extra strap for the Eberly stock for mounting, but secondly, it, just like on the Janus, we have the compass. So you guys can see just a simple basic Brunton compass right there up front. Okay, so we've talked about those things. Now it's time to actually look at the core of this pack, which is behind these two zippers, which are very nicely, they have a very nice pull on them. Now another thing I do want to mention while we're opening this is this is not a sponsored gear review. This is not a sponsored anything. None of the brands in here paid to be in here. I bought all of this stuff with my money because I think that it performs the best. So keep that in mind. So let's dig into this spill pouch. So the first thing we have here is normally I run my 44 Magnum and that is exactly what is in here. These are my bare loads for the 44 Magnum. And I carry an extra 15 of them in here. So that is the first thing, having some extra reloads for my 44. Now, next to that, we have some matches in a pretty familiar match container. So digging into the next part, it's pretty basic. We have a few things of multicolored or different colored uh, 
trip wire or snare wire. Once again, this kit has a dual emphasis on being able to be used effectively in camouflage and in general uh, at the beach, on the water's edge, or in the middle of the forest. So we have tan uh, or flat dark earth paracord and olive drab paracord. Then digging into the last bits of this part are the iodine tablets and lastly we have or a few things more but then we have the bandana and inside this bandana is a survival blanket wrapped up with rubber bands now to the for or the back back wall so first we have 100 percent deet and this stuff's very effective in very small quantities obviously it's extremely potent but when you're out here you need to stay comfortable or you don't want the mosquitoes bothering you on some days they can be truly horrendous on this day we we're really fortunate there's actually not many of them but then again it did just snow so yeah that's a very important thing to have especially in the summer so then digging a little bit lower we have a this is a u.s military survival kind of um signaling mirror and it has a little like aiming thing to it. So very old, very ancient, got this many years ago. So then we have at the very bottom of this, we have a sail needle or a canvas needle and more safety pins because you can never have too many of those guys. They're really handy in a pinch, especially if you're dealing with like tears. So then moving over to this side, this is the, kind of the designated fishing side of things. So pulling it all out together or at least trying to we have a little thing for fish just a little stringer for fish then we have of course as you guys are probably familiar with the mini uh, tack kit or a little like tack box and then in here we have a whole bunch of different uh, baits or lures and then we have a two different varieties of line they're a little bit hard to see but they are monofilament and one is thicker and heavier gauge as you guys can see there and then one's up here a little bit thinner gauge so two different lines for a wide variety of fishing ability in alaska okay and probably to the most useful side of this is this side so it's a little bit hard to open for you guys but there's essentially three kind of separated pouches here you have this zipper here then you have this area and then you have three separate kind of pouches there so starting in this zippered area is just a little bit more bandages and down at the very bottom is a small bottle like an ounce bottle of triple antibiotic ointment just to prevent infections because out here where there's lots of dirt there's lots of nastiness it's really nice to have just a quick and simple, easy to spread and easy to use thing that can prevent you from getting further infected or prevent you from getting any infection at all. Now to the parts where you guys actually saw this video is more up here. So this is kind of the food pouch here or the consumables. So in here we have seven now but we used to have eight uh starbucks vias these are french roast and the reason why i like french roast is it's a really dark heavy roast and i find when i'm out in the woods i like having a nice dark roast because it kind of wakes me up <laughs> then we got of course some cliff bars in there as well then moving to the back we have these two pouches here are devoted to fire so we have wet fire tabs in here and we just have a bunch of them in there and then of course we have the um, light my fire army in blaze orange with some tinder quicks and some more wet fire for good measure so that is basically what comprises the fire so then over here on another lanyard we keep the us or not ust sorry but fox 40 howler and this is the micro howler and then we keep three or sorry two um, smaller cheaper uh, mylar blankets over here now a lot of people may ask why why in the world am i carrying three mylar blankets well one i can get away with it with this large of a pack with this large of a pack but two if you guys have any experience honest to god camping with mylar blankets you will know that 
just one is not enough to cut it. You will get cold as heck if you just have one. And that's because Mylar blankets are very effective, but if they find the smallest out or the smallest little hole is in one, heat will escape like crazy. So I like to have a couple because that way you throw a couple on, they keep that warm in. So if one has a small hole in it, the other kind of keeps or covers that hole, keeps the heat reflecting. So then on the other side, or behind that, we have a Smith's pocket sharpener. These I hate, but this is the best pull-through pocket sharpener you can really get, primarily because it has this convenient diamond rod that you can use instead of the pull-through, but it's nice and important to have. Then in front of those Mylar blankets, we have a piece of aluminum foil for cooking or for water catchment and boiling, and then and we just have a little piece of kydex wrapped in military grade duct tape so that is what's in front of it and of course i always make sure this aluminum foil is facing away from the mylar because you do not want that really weak mylar getting scratched so also in addition to this stuff there is a couple plastic bags down in here or down with the food stuff and in addition to that these mylar blankets come with their own plastic bags so a lot of people may ask how do i use the uh, iodine tablets that i just showed you guys it's all these plastic bags you just take them to a lake or you take them to a pond fill them all up with water drop a tablet a half tablet a quarter tablet whatever in there and you have purified water so anyway so anyways guys that is how i use those and that is the full contents of the updated generation 2 personal survival kit this one being the eberly stock what an amazing pack guys really do check this thing out